Hey guys, welcome to the... Well, I don't know what the hell I'm calling these things. Basically, the, the day one tutorial series where I'm basically just going to thrust myself into this game and try to give you a fucking decent tutorial for Armored Core Verdict Day. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, oh, this is a tutorial. You're not even playing the game yet. You noob. Ah. Well... Alright, whatever, like, I don't really know what to tell you guys. Genuinely underwhelmed with the quality of the, I guess, beginner tutorial things for, I guess, just Armored Core in general, recently. Um, I mean, there's people that'll, they'll try to make great strides, they'll make really good videos, and then they just drop the ball, and then there's, there's nothing to go on. Um, what this is gonna be, pardon me for just taking a minute to preface this, is this is going to be me once a week, more or less. I mean, if I don't push one out every week, then it's whatever. But once a week, I'm going to try to give you guys an Armored Core guide. And I know some of you are probably thinking, Oh, too little, too late, Sash. Well, I don't really care. I'm just doing this for the hell of it. And it's the one project that I have in my way before I get to go play in Crisis. And that's going to be awesome. Anyhow, how this is going to look is I'm going to take you guys through the game as if it was your first time playing it. Hence, day one, basically. And, um, we're gonna probably, I guess, take the, the kitty handballs off, heh, the kitty training wheels off, I'd say. And I'm just gonna go, and I'm gonna try to blast you through this game as quick as possible, and try to get you ready for PvP. Because, personally, that's why I play the game. I know a lot of people like the story, but I like the PvP. Now, this guide is also coming about after I lost my faith in humanity. I mean, witnessed a new player struggle to complete story missions. I think the mission is mission two or three or something. I'll point it out when we get to it. And I was like, this is a fucking travesty. So, yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is going to be like a guided tour, basically. It's not going to be a walkthrough. I'm going to point out along the way shit that might improve your your experience a little bit my ultimate goal of this is to help people have fun with armored core verdict day and i guess just get into armored core games in general uh that's enough of that we're just going to get right into it so preparing to import save data from armored core 5 i want to say acv but you get the idea anyhow you can only import data once if you've played armored core 5 before verdict day which i guess i would recommend doing you can import your data and um You'll basically just get your emblems and shit, and you'll also keep all the parts that you've unlocked. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm also doing this just to sort of like reinforce a speedrun route of mine that I'm trying to make for this game. So I'm going to be starting dry on a offline account that has nothing loaded up. So we're not going to upload anything or import any data, I mean. And we're just going to dive right into this with a, a junk AC. This guy is going to assume that you are fresh out of the fucking gates of hell and have no idea what the fuck you're doing. And yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. Paint data, I don't know. Let's be a no, let's be a green shark. Is there a green shark? There we go. Alright, pilot name. You know, this this is the shit that you can just skip, I'm going to say. You can skip a lot of this. It's not really going to be very important at all, I don't think. Um, let's see. The music is great in this game. Effects volume, voice volume. This is not going to be a story walkthrough, I will tell you that. This is just going to be me telling you what's up. Um, let's see, screen settings. I'm just going to try to make this as obvious as possible. What the hell. So anyhow, first thing I'm going to stop on is controls. Um, if I'm smart, I'm going to later graft in something about fucking controls. I know Frumcheng has a, a nifty little guide that he's been working on about this, but that's just text. This is going to be a video, so I'm going to try to make this as painfully easy for you as possible if I mean that's if I can that's my objective um, personally I run with default controls if I again if I remember I will link in a control scheme that will uh, make sense <laughs> hopefully um, again this is just shit that I'm comfortable with but I've been playing this game for years so that's that 
so we're going to finish up here, and we're just going to get into the game. And I think, what does it do? Is it just going to put me into a level here? I think that's what it does. Oh no, we have to log on to the server and shit. Ugh. Or no, there's not a server to log on to, so never mind. Saving customs. Yeah, we don't have any territory, and we're not going to get any, so I don't get what the issue is. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you can probably tell that I'm just doing this pretty well dry. I mean, I do have a script, but that's not going to come to play until later, because this is just getting through shit. Screenshot. Do we need a fucking screenshot? Oh. Yeah, we don't need this. Uh, fucking, ugh, tutorial. This is not going to teach you anything. This is one of the shortcomings of this game, is that this these little tutorials, are you're not going to learn shit from this. You're just going to basically toil around to no avail. And I think that's that's the issue with this game, is that the story reinforces really bad habits for PvP. Um, there's some things uh, that the story will do if you're playing the game, I guess, one way as opposed to another, that will be helpful. Um, but really, I don't think it does a whole lot for you. Especially this, like, this is the most dumb shit. You can pause if you want to read that. I'm just gonna go ahead and blast through this. Jumps. Oh, you can jump! Jumping in boost drive. Yeah, there we go. So if you go up next to a wall... Ooh, scan mode. Well, I'm already in scan mode. That's the sort of shit that's instinctual. So yeah, if I go up against a building, I can leap off of it. I'm just gonna say, and probably mention it repeatedly throughout the game, that you should just be maximizing your mobility options. It's available to you, you have no reason not to use it, like my energy bar. I can just spam that shit. Oh, attacking things! You know, I bet you figured this game out already. You know, you just, you just fucking shoot bullets and stuff and it's wonderful. Change modes! Ah, this is just spamming me with shit that I already know. Sorry if I seem annoyed, but I'm just so underwhelmed with this freaking tutorial thing. Oh yeah, you'll notice those things that say enemy over there. I've been throwing up recons. That's, I think, B button on the regular controls. Ah, uh, what the hell. So what's left here? Yes, yeah, scan mode. Um, if you're moving about and you're not shooting anything, scan mode is your friend. Combat mode is what allows you to shoot things. Scan mode, I guess I'll cover later. Search and analyze. Oh, goody, yeah, recon units. I just talked about that. Analyze target and scan mode. Oh, this is really important. I might as well just say this right now. So you see that little bar? Yeah, that's just scanned up real quick. Let's fucking get over these guys. Alright, see, look, it's a tank. Oh, man, that thing says scanning under there. It's a hundred. Uh, and then you tap right trigger, and oh, man, look, it's a, uh, it's a fucking tank thing. That's, yeah. I'll just talk about scan mode in a different episode, because that's just going to take me fucking forever. Basically, all I need to know is, hey, look, scan enemies, and do so when it benefits you, I guess. Uh, typically in story mode you don't need to scan shit except for enemy ACs, unless, like, you're doing ineffective damage, in which case you're going to want to check. Advanced moves. Yeah, boost charge is pretty cool. I'm going to be mentioning that a lot, I guess. Or I'm going to be using it a lot, because it's going to clear the story really easy. Uh, glide boost. Um, high boost and glide boost are mobility options that are really just going to be super important. Here's high boost. Um, different boosters will have different durations to high boost. Glide boost is done by, at least on my controls, tapping in the stick on the left side. Um, you can do a lot of cool things with glide boost, like move around really ridiculously. I have a broken stick actually, so some of these move, uh, maneuvers are really going to look kind of off, and I'm going to break glide boost, and it's not going to really look all that good, but whatever. Alright, so we're going to finish up these enemies, and oh yeah, here's something, never forget about your shoulder units, you see that little thing? You can barely see it, let's see if we can get up against a wall or something, yeah, here we go. See that thing? Alright, so you see my two weapons locking on, if they're locked on, that's called red lock, you will hit the target, basically, unless it's moving at an extreme pace. Um, can I demonstrate it? Yeah, there, you see the one takes a little while to lock on, before that, it means you have blue lock, which means you can fire in the general direction you're AC, or your enemy. That's that, and I didn't get to demonstrate that, I'll demonstrate it later. Basically, you have little little pips, I guess, that show up above your right arm weapon. I think it might be different if you have a left arm shoulder. Mm. Pardon me, basically, those are your shoulders. Some of them, some shoulder units are passive, others are missiles, so remember to fire those. Team name, ugh, fucking... Gap. There you go. Team emblem, fucking... Okay. Yes. Perfect.
This boy wants water. Take your water. Go. There you go. Right then. So, Fresh Kappa and the Capital Prince of Kappa's Team Kappa of the Fresh. I don't fucking whatever. So this is basically the server screen. We're offline, so it's not gonna matter. Uh, yeah. Not much to say here. It's gonna say basic guide shit up there. It's useless. Don't pay attention to it. Uh, this this is not really important to you. Basically, there's only two things that matter here, which is workshop and sortie. Um, I'm gonna go to the workshop right now and give you a tour real quick. And I guess in this episode, I might cover important stats, at least briefly. I'll cover it in a different episode in depth, though. So, hey, look, this is your AC. If you press back, you can look at it better, and it looks all right, and you can center your viewpoint. I'm not going to paint this, not going to name it. AC data, oh, well, pre in previous fucking Armored Core 5, this would eat your fucking... you just die. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um... There was a, a like a caching glitch or whatever that would sometimes if you went if you used AC data in free battle for example it'd just crash. Um, it's not shop. Shop is a shop. We have a little bit of money now. Uh, I don't believe there's anything that we especially need, and there's not a whole lot that we can buy anyhow. Yeah, no, all this stuff is pretty expensive. So right there, I guess you just got a glimpse of workshop, or I guess assembly, whatever you want to call it. So here we are in assembly. You get to assemble every little bit of your fucking AC, and whatever's highlighted is basically what you're swapping out. So if you want to look over on the right and see what you have, that can work. I use the left, that little bar that's I'm scoring along, and then we don't have a whole lot of parts, but you can change it to display, you know, a whole lot of different shit. Yeah, that's basically it. There's not a whole lot to choose from because we haven't unlocked anything. But you get the idea. Uh, yeah, so I guess we're just gonna roll with it. And I'll probably talk about stats later, actually. Because they're not gonna be relevant for a little while. And now we're gonna get to the story. Which I'm not gonna let you watch, because that's not what this is about. We're just gonna tell you how to fucking get into the game as quick as possible. And that means I'm gonna blaze through it. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'm tired. I haven't had my nap. I've been getting like four hours of sleep each night. You know, regular life of a student. Um, work's been better, though. Work has been great recently, but not that you care about me. Why haven't I skipped this? There we go. Right then, so... Whenever you're getting into a mission... Personally, I say immediately flip into scam mode, turn on your booster, throw out a recon. Um, I'm not going to remember what the hell the controls are because it's just muscle memory for me. I may explain it better uh, in some situations than others. <laughs> this thing, I'm going to come up here and kick it because it's going to be awesome. There we go. Oh, it survived. That's pathetic. Kicks have different active frames and they have different damage numbers during the frames. I don't know the formula for it but whatever. Anyhow, what was I saying about controls? About controls, I will be explaining things, I guess, using my control scheme, which is the default. Um, I would definitely recommend changing up your control scheme, because it seems like a lot of people have trouble with the default controls, and I can understand why. You'll notice that I'm using Glide Boost a lot. Glide Boost is your best mobility option in this game, unless you're using a really wonky booster, in which case you're probably fucking playing wrong. Um, not that I'm really going to be offended by that. You do what you want to do. Oh, there we go. I shot a little missile, but it missed, so it just went off in the air. Yeah, if you shoot a missile at a target that's already dead, it will uh, just go do its thing. Wow, these missiles are pathetic. Hit that target. Go for it. Oh, you are a lame missile. What are you, like a junk Mathura? I just fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> some missiles have a minimum range, I should point out, but this is not the episode for that. Anyhow, enough demonstrating shit. Let's get this mission over with. Oh, I'm bad. Yeah, these things, what are they called? Golems? Um, they got that shield in the front. They're just annoying to fight. More than anything. Because first you have to blow off the fucking shield, and then, you know, they're just tanky as hell. They'll try to ram you, which is amusing at best. Alright, is that it? 
Oh, no enemy signatures. Wonderful, wonderful. Right, so you can combine high boost and glide boost, and that will give you a lot of instantaneous mobility. Um, glide boosting to your target is always the most energy efficient way of doing it, unless you're in combat mode, in which case it's just mashing out high boosts to close the distance. Um, when you're glide boosting and you throw out a high boost, you are basically converting your energy gauge into instantaneous thrust, which is you know less efficient, but if you need to get someplace in a hurry, you go ahead and do that. Um, some people will use it for dodging while in glide boost. Others will just mash it out. I am one of the people who just mashes it out because I want to go fast, and you probably should too. That's basically the matter of it. Anyhow, oh, we obtained some shit. Oh, hey, look, player rank. Um, this is really important, actually. If you are ass at this game, you will continue to be ass because this game rewards you for getting S rank clears and clearing subquests and such. So this little bar thing is going to fill up, depending on how well you do on the missions. And when you fill up a star, uh, you will get more shit in your uh, shop. So you will be able to access better AC parts by doing better in the game. Which, uh, okay, I guess that's fine. I'm just going to skip through all this because it's not important. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to grind through these missions. Basically, one, this is practice for me. Two, this is just going to be... I'm going to go into like the second mission and then just explain briefly like what the fuck to do, I guess. We're already getting close to 20 minutes, and I know people are going to lose interest by then, more than likely. So I'm going to put up like a, a supplementary bit. I'm just going to record, actually, the only interesting stuff. So I guess general combat tips is against these fat things, you're going to want to use your battle rifle. Oh yeah, um, holding down Y and then your triggers is going to let you switch weapons, which you can see I'm doing right now. On our left side, we're going to like the basic starter I see. Our left side is a junk fucking Padanka and a... PMG behind that. These little avian things, what are they called? I don't remember. Hellkites? Yeah. You don't want to PMG these things down because your battle rifle is probably not going to hit them. Your rifle won't either, more than likely. It's just bad unless they're flying straight at you. Um, throwing missiles out is always a good idea for extra damage. Um, don't really matter though. PMG actually has great DPS, so you can probably hit these things with it as well. But your battle rifle's pretty much a good bet. It's a good ranged weapon. Um, something I noticed actually is that a lot of people like playing at really, really, really extremely long ranges. I'm going to show you, if I can, why that's not really a good idea. Well, that thing just fucking threw, flew right at me, so that defeats the purpose. But anyhow, what I'm saying about that is, um, people like playing at range, at least in the story it seems. And I think that's a bad habit, because when you go online, um, people don't move like story mode enemies, so you're not going to be able to hit them with a, a tiny SFCS that's, and you're like 500 whatever meters units away. Oh, see, there you go, that's a little star thing. And yeah, I got parts, wonderful. That's how that works. Yeah, I think I will cut this here, and you will rejoin me when I have completed more of these missions. Actually, psych. <laughs> We're just going to roll with it. Fuck it. So this is going to be our first encounter with an AC. You know, I'm just going to go and I'm going to play up until the what the next mission that we hit. I think it's mission two. And then I'm going to probably move into explaining what you can do um, elsewise. You might just get a bunch of videos out of me. Who knows? Um, basically, this is just going to be a quick thing of hand-holding. And I'm going to try to explain AC combat, because this is a really pathetic example of an AC. And I'm... Yeah, okay, here it comes. We're going to skip the cutscene, because fuck it. Um, in general, whenever you're fighting another AC in the story, clear out the turrets and other smaller enemies, because they're not really going to do a whole lot to you other than distract you and take your AP away. Alright, so there that fucker is. We're going to scan him. Oh, look! So there's his defenses. KE is low, TE is low. Man has a fuckload of CE, so let's not use our battle rifle, since our battle rifle is chemical energy. We're going to use thermal and kinetic, and this guy is going to disappear. <laughs> and that's that. Oh, one thing is you should probably try to avoid glide boosting when you're using a thermal energy weapon, because they do typically drain your generator. However, I have plenty of shit, and it's not really going to matter. Now this thing... 
I'm kind of being careless right now, so he went ahead and shot me with a bunch of uh, laser cannon shots, which is kind of painful, but it's whatever. So you always see that I'm throwing myself into scan mode, and I'm basically holding down my jump button, which is A on the basic controls, and you probably guess that I'm clawing really bad, um, because clearly your thumb cannot move the joystick and jump at the same time. Or the right stick, I should say. That's basically that, it's just general EN management and such. You just maximize your mobility. That's something I'm just going to keep on saying, so you better get used to hearing it. Other than that though, AC combat is pretty easy in the story. If you have any trouble with it, you're, probably your build is just bad. Or, you know, you could be bad, I don't know. <laughs> Assuming you're uh, not equipped with um, tortoise fingers, you're probably going to be okay though. Really, I guess you could treat this like StarCraft in a way, in that uh, simply doing idle motions on your controller is going to teach you uh, it's just going to raise your, your actions per minute, basically, so you're going to be able to do a lot more. And it's it's a learned thing. I'm not going to expect anybody to like pick it up immediately, but it is what it is. Oh, so in these little briefing screens, again, if you're having trouble with the story, which I don't think you ever should, it's, I, I don't know, it's incomprehensible, um, or inconceivable, really, I should say, to a lot of the Armored Core players out there that anyone could ever have issues with this game. And that's because we have we've been playing long before you guys have, you young newbies who are maybe listening to this. And that leads to kind of a division in the community, which this video is I guess intended to to help repair. By one equipping you with the tools necessary to fucking win. And that was the only point I wanted to make. I don't know why I said one. Anyhow. So, mission information, if you're ever having trouble with the mission, uh, check here. You're going to see it anyway. You're going to see your objectives, and you're just going to see basically like, oh, you know, attack these guys, and here's the general mission. Usually every single mission is going to be kill everything in the area and do it as fast as possible. Enemy information up there. We can see we're fighting these little Hellkite things, and that there is a sniper cannon, fucking normal, or whatever you want to call it. They're pretty pathetic, so don't worry about it. So popping into this one, I'm probably going to end up illustrating a little bit of cover because you can see those little red lines. Oh no, sniper enemies. Looks like everything here is going to be weak to TE, so I'm going to pull out our PMG quick and we're going to glide boost right over and I like going fast and I want to get through this. So we're going to glide boost a little bit, mash high boosts out, and we're going to come up on this guy. This guy is a Hellkite, so we're just going to shoot at him a little bit and he's going to go down really easy. Something you'll notice I'm doing is I'll jump and then cut my boosters. This will allow you to slide around the ground a little bit, and um, it's a good way that if you are desperate to get out a glide boost, which I normally am, um, you'll reach the ground quicker and be able to execute one while you are um, still drifting, and your momentum will carry over so you will have less time where you're just sitting there idle and taking fire. These little Hellkites are really nothing to shake a stick at. I mean, they are something to shake a fucking... <laughs> they're nothing but a pain in the neck. I should say. Now, because we're closing up on these guys, they are discarding their sniper cannons, or they're folding them back up. Uh, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but basically, yeah. So, climbing up buildings is always a good idea. Getting height means that you can aim down, and aiming down and shooting at people while golly boosting is a great idea. This is something I will likely illustrate a lot. Now, this guy's redeployed his sniper cannon, but he can't hit shit if we're glide boosting, more than likely. And yeah, a little bit of scam mode energy management there. And hey, we still have glide boost and we can make it back to our building. Yay. And we're heading home. That's that. Now, if there were... If this were more like, I guess, Dark Souls or something, it would probably be less annoying to see me go through mission after mission. So, I digress. Bear with me, guys. <laughs> uh, new parts again. Wonderful, wonderful. Although this really isn't going to matter a whole lot. Because, personally, I'm not going to need parts until quite a ways into the game. But let's just go for the sake of it and see what we can get here. Now there's actually quite a variety, if I do remember right, of stuff that's available early on to you. So I will probably go over weapons in their own episodes. Uh, for story, there's a couple things that are really useful here. 
Uh, one of them, I would say, suggest getting uh, better weapons first, because weapons are great. Your frame is pretty safe early on. You have... Oh, yeah, here, I did a bunch of things, and I'm not explaining them. Right, so tapping Y, up there it says toggle display, you'll see. Well, I can toggle this screen, and this screen I will explain in a later episode. Um, basically, let's... Well, I don't have any other parts, but let's see. Oh, yeah, you can see now this new rifle... You're only going to see that I have better ammo, better reload, and, you know, more optimal range. Weight, energy consumption is actually considerably more. Oh, that's because it's a battle rifle. Let's go back. Yeah, there you have it. Rifle. So, junk weapons are, or junk everything is terrible. Oh, no! That's an alarm! Turn off. All right. Pretty impromptu, guys. You're going to have to bear with me. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I will take this as seriously as I can in the shorter segments, but this is just me running through it real quick. Anyhow, basic rifle. Ooh, goody. It's better in almost every way. Let's pick one of these up. Oh, gosh. Tuning. Um, For our purposes, you're almost always going to go full power, unless there's other tunings that are, you know, making sense to you. In general, I would say just ask veteran players. Um... I'm going to try to cut out having to ask people what the fuck to use as much as I can. Honestly, because, well, I don't really care to uh, mention all that. Let's see. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot that we can make use of right now. Better shoulders, maybe. Stealth missiles. <laughs> missiles. Missiles. AS missiles. Eh, you know, we'll fucking try these things. And actually, no, not worth it. Um, something that I will mention is that early on... Uh, you have access to a pretty decent FCS, which is the, we call it the Ot Crit. This is the E28. If you want to go by the VD translation scheme or whatever. Uh, let's see, do we have anything else that's decent? No, not really. Shit. That's the thing is that, um, the game starts you out with a pretty shitty AC. It's literally made of junk. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and buy these because they're performance is better than the junk parts anyhow, and I'll probably explain them at a later date. And we don't have a lot that we can buy here at the shop, so we're just gonna hop on back into the game. Oh yeah, the thing is, after you buy parts, remember to equip them in assembly. It would be awkward to buy a brand new rifle and then go out without it. And then, can I equip more shit? Oh yeah, there's more junk parts for me, although we don't have the loading capacity to equip anything, which is sad. So backing out here, can you fucking... Yeah, there you go. So, um, right right trigger is going to let you swap between just the stuff in the category and all of your available parts. Might be useful in some cases, I don't really care. Um, X is going to let you sort things by weight and drain and stuff. So we're going to, oh, what's output? Well, max output, wonderful. There you go. Um, so you can see here, if I change this, this is going to change energy recovery, turning, and, you know, whatnot. Uh, what's most important usually is to check your boosters, because now, oh look, the booster number up there went up. So, I call that one that's in orange there, booster, that's your normal boost, and then the other number, HB, is high boost. And that's that. So our energy recovery is going to go down because this thing drains more. Energy consumption down there, you can see, is a lot lower, or means a lot higher. By about 800 points, that's not really going to matter all that much, because you will see, um, well... Yeah, this shit's just better in general. Or, as well as our efficiency is higher, so even though our energy consumption is higher, our efficiency is better. Generally, um, high acceleration type boosters are very efficient. This is, what the hell is it called? BA-214. Uh, you know, I don't really give a damn about it, honestly. Um, we call this thing the UBT. Uh, what is it? UBT-25 slash H, that's the name that we had in ACV. Uh, a lot of veteran players have played ACV, and so we're going to be calling parts by their names then, because what they are in this game is barcodes, and nobody likes that, because it's dumb. Anyhow, so we have a one-on-one -on -one AC fight here. Oh, this guy's terrible, I'm going to kick his shit in, it's going to be wonderful. Um, oh, shoot, yeah, on that screen they mention typically what kind of leg type the enemy AC will have, and, like, what the hell they're using and whatnot. That's going to be basically the end of it. Other than that, though, um, there's really not a whole lot to these. It's just kill them real quick. And that's really all it is. 
this guy in particular is using Vendetta Weapon Arms, which is pretty fucking pathetic, if you ask me. Like, yeah, you'll see... Oh, they look cool, but... Um, his programming is just shit, so he's... If he hits me with them, then I'm bad. And you can quote me on that. Um, and he's got a football helmet as an emblem, which is cool. So, what the hell was I on about? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to lose track of whatever the fuck I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Let's scan this dude. All right. What you got? So, you got some fucking... Yeah. Ironically, he buffs out our fucking PMG. And, look, like, he's just going to wander off and just do his own thing. Oh, but now that we have a different FCS, our missiles are actually going to fucking lock on. That's something I didn't mention about uh, your fire control system is that your, your FCS will determine how many missiles you can fire. And these missiles are just having a lot of trouble hitting him to begin with. But I'm just going to backpedal this dude because, you know, he's kind of pathetic. And that's that, basically. Actually, let's come with missiles because this could be really funny. Anyhow, yeah, your fire control system, um, your FCS for short, we're just going to say that. It really determines a whole hell of a lot about this game. And I feel like a lot of new players don't really recognize that. Like, sometimes they'll just see green, or, I mean, blue numbers, and they'll be like, Oh, awesome, it's better arbitrarily. But, um, you kind of need to take a look at what the stats actually say. Because you can find yourself using an FCS that's just completely unwieldy and doesn't support the weapons that you want to use. Um, in this case, the Ot crit is a really good balance of range, missile locking, and honestly, for story, you're not going to need weapon handling that much. So our weapon handling is pretty low. It's I'd say that it's the slowest among... Uh, I guess the standardly used fucking FCSs, but it's whatever. Oh, cool. Another thing is that sometimes when you uh, kill a story mode enemy, I guess always, and they have a retrofitted part, you will acquire their part. So that saved us a trip to the shop because we just have a new core now, which is wonderful. And I did not confirm that. Oops. <laughs> and then you'll get their little personal file. That's not important. What's next? Alright, story two. Capture enemy intelligence squadron. Everything is unknown. They, they like to do this to you. They're like, oh, it's unknown, unspecified. This mission, this fucking mission, I saw someone struggle to beat this. Which, if you're like me and you're a veteran AC player, you know that that is... It's basically inconceivable. Like you, I can't, I can't even explain it. Like I don't know how you could be so bad at a video game, and yet people are. And I think it's a mix of people, I guess, trying to try out way too much shit in this, like an assembly. They'll be like, "Oh, I want to be like a fucking uh, the heavy RJ, yeah," and uh, you know, oh, this, oh, this, we're just, and then we're just gonna fucking throw on a whole bunch of shit, and it's not gonna make any sense. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, like, just garbage, and we're going to have a, a long-range FCS, it's, you know, long-ass long-range. Look, our fucking lock size is 7. Lock size, do you know what lock size is? Lock size means that they got to be fucking right in the center of your goddamn screen for you to hit them, and, you know, that sort of shit. And so you get this really unwieldy piece of shit, and uh, you're like, oh, I'm cool, it looks fun, you know, let's go into story. And then, you know, you're, you're kind of... You're shooting yourself in the foot is what you're doing. It's just it's just nonsense is what I think, so that's why I'm here stressing a point and being a meanie. Um, quick changes. CE heads um, for handling stats are really good. Equip those. <laughs> um, this tutorial series is going to focus on um, making modular builds. And in that case, we're going to be using midweight legs primarily. Although I will transition later as we unlock more stuff. And yeah, no, yeah, we're just going to equip the core that we just got. You can see it's a kind of a stat hike compared to our previous core. This thing is retrofitted for anti-CE, which is cute. Um, drops our AP, does not really matter a whole bunch. Because combined with our new internals, we're going to be moving a lot faster, shooting a lot harder and whatnot. That's something I will stress is um, fix out your internals first. Internals are going to determine your uh, your performance a lot better. Personally, I went through these missions with just the whole junk stuff, trying to test out if you could do it. And, I mean, you can. It's just this is going to quicken things up considerably, I should think. Basically, 
so this is what this is a story mission story mission two there's these things these little markers that you need to go to and clear all the enemies there basically just kill every enemy on the map um, this level has a ton of verticality to it though which I can see throwing people off there's flying enemies if you don't realize that flying enemies exist you might somehow die I, I saw it happen guys I'm sorry it just it's traumatized me um, yeah basically uh, if, if you're ever in doubt just do kinda like what I did and just backpedal the enemies um, it's viewed as an underhanded tactic to do, but the, what the fuck, these are story mode enemies, who gives a shit? Um, the other issue I think I might actually have is, um, ammo problems, but that's probably not going to be that big of an issue. You'll see I PMG'd that thing there, I think it's resistant to it, I don't remember. Hellkites, uh, everything's pretty much just going to die really quickly here. Oh, that's a blue laser, I think that means... That means CE? What? Yeah, that does mean CE. Okay, I just got hit by a CE warhead. Wonderful. So these things are weak to TE, they buff out CE pretty considerably. Let's actually scan you real quick. Oh, too late, you're dead. My bad. Alright, scan mode usage. Let's see what you have. Oh, yeah. Look at all those defenses. So they're weak to... Who's shooting at me? <laughs> Quit it, you little guys. No, yeah. So those things really fucking weak. Oh, yeah. Just another thing. Look up. I remember the last guy I watched try to play this level that traumatized me so much. Is he just did not look up. He also didn't... You have boosters. He was basically walk around like this... And he's like trying to beat this game, but you understand, like you just been watching what I've been doing. Like, there's so many different ways to play it, or there's so much better ways to play it. And I think sometimes just seeing that in action can kind of help people out. Like when I was trying to get into Titanfall, for example, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, it's basically Call of Duty." I mean, if you play it like Call of Duty, it is Call of Duty. And I think a lot of people try to play this like it's Call of Duty, and that's just not going to work. So this game is Armored Core. So you're seeing my mobility is ridiculous because I'm just jumping on all these fucking buildings and stuff and use my boost drive. That's get me around. And then just backpedaling these enemies and hardly take damage at all. And then they're all dying. And with that proper FCS, I'm able to fucking fight at the ranges that I want to. And my lock ring is large enough that it's not gonna be an issue. Turrets, I'm gonna say, oh no, that's gonna stagger me. <laughs> it's gonna stagger me out of the kicks. Ah, stop it. Stop it. There we go. We're gonna kick it once. I'm just gonna lose a lot of AP here if I try to kick that thing a ton because I have no recoil resistance. Um, that's the thing, you notice that message that appeared that's, uh, what did it say, stagger stun? Stagger state reduces your armor by about 20% um, which can be huge in some cases. In fact a lot of the whatever you'd call them, award winning weapon combos sort of base themselves around that and they do not loads of damage and that's basically the point of them. Um, yeah, turrets here, whatever. Uh, if you're staggered hard enough, which I guess I'll cover in another episode again, sorry to just keep putting this shit off, um, you will go into that sort of stun state where your movement is interrupted, and that's really annoying. You don't want to be in that, if you can help it. Again, I'd probably try to showcase this a little bit more if I had the, the patience for it, but I really don't, and I want to get to the juicier, more interesting topics about Armored Core, and that means, I guess, rushing through this as much as we can. And I ran out of energy there when I tried to kick, so... Could have gotten punished. Oops. Charge Master! Uh oh, you lived. And I'm bad at this game. Oops. There we go. Alright, and I took a Howie full of fucking. a face full of Howies. Oops. Alright, well, that's that thing taken care of. Now, scan mode again. Um, really important, because you'll see. Alright, so if I'm fighting on ground level, I have no idea where the fuck anything is. I'm moving around slowly. I'm never going to fucking beat this mission. And if there's something freaking wailing on me, I'm not going to see it in time. Scan mode? Throw out a recon? I have the long range recons, I like to call them, so you toss these things out. I prefer the ones that float above your head, but to each their own. And look, now I can see these enemies over there. They're highlighted in blue, and I can see them behind cover too. Oh, wonderful. And I scan it, and oh, look, you're a Hellkite, so I can go over there and fight it. Wonderful. And that's scan mode in a nutshell. So these things are going to aggro onto me. I'm just going to sort of throw out... I'm just going to trigger hold, really, and just hold down my jump button and move backward. And they're all going to die. And I am going to get a little bit low on AP here, but that's not really going to matter. <laughs> Usually speed is what matters when you're beating shit. See, this thing... You can flank these little sniper dudes pretty easy. You see the defense spread is really freaking skewed, so if I just shoot this guy a little bit, he's gonna die. But if I shot him with a battle rifle or something, 
It's got like 3,000 defense on that, so, I mean, what the hell is that going to do? Now, in scan mode C, there's still this marker here. I guess it's there in combat mode too. That means there's still enemies afoot, which means there's probably something that's flying around that's really annoying. Or, no, there's a sniper. Where are you, friend? Sniper friend. Sniper friend, where are you? Oh. I am a fool. Anyhow, I guess so much for that topic, really. And I think this mission is over. Unless I missed something else. Yep, that's that. So yeah, I finished that with about 11k left. If I had a real AC, it would be a lot quicker, but it, it is what it is. Hardly use my BR at all, actually. I don't think I really needed it that much. Cycling weapons is entertaining, I guess. I'd say definitely be sure when you're using scan mode, decide which weapons are going to be most effective. And try to memorize what you've got. I know some people will forget that they have things equipped. But, I don't know. <laughs> some people are silly. Oh look, we got an achievement. So, already we're two main story missions into the game. And, yeah, that's that. This has been, what, a little bit over 40 minutes? Sheesh. <laughs> that's bad time. <clears throat> Pardon me. I had dinner. No, what the hell. I don't think I unlocked anything else. Story. You can see there's all these new missions. This says next on it, so I guess next sequentially. Oh, defenders and heavy helicopters. Well, this should be fun. Some kind of criminal gang. I don't know. Like, a lot of this... The storytelling this is kind of bullshit. I'm not going to pay attention to it. <laughs> the, it is what it is, though. So I guess regarding the guided tour aspect of this, um, I, I guess treat it like a playthrough. I will make specific tutorial videos illustrating certain things about it that I may have glazed over in the actual thing. So moving into this, we're going to throw in some recons, figure out who's all there. We're going to shoot at this guy a little bit, again using Glide Boost to maximize our movement and get ourselves in here quick. Alright, taking these things out. What's here? Oh look, a little turret thing. Well, you're dead. Great. Oh, another turret. I nearly jumped into you. Oh, and that thing looks like a giant helicopter. It's really spooky. Let's scan it. Oh, well, it's weak to a couple of things, so let's shoot it with a couple of things. So you can see here, I'm going to read scan mode, because this thing is pretty much stationary for the most part. So you see his defenses there, and you can see on the right actually are my weapons. Um, as you see, TE-482, KE-1370. So, my rifle ain't gonna do a whole lot, but my PMG is, and you're gonna see what effective damage does to unprotected targets, is it does a lot of damage. And so this thing is gonna go down pretty easy, and it's trying to bomb me with really big whatever things, and that looked like fun. But too bad, because they're dead. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry for bad humor. I'm really just trying to keep myself entertained, because this is boring for me. <laughs> uh, story mode is... Definitely not my strong suit. Uh, I would like to get through it as fast as possible. To talk about fun things. Um, really, I found that by the time I think you get to like mission 6 or so, I mean story mission 6, you will have access to uh, a really rudimentary PvP frame that you'll be able to use in uh, multiplayer. But for now, we're just going to focus on getting folks through the story. And that really shouldn't be all that difficult, because as you can see, if I'm doing it, I mean, I know that my skill may be a little bit greater than the average player, but I am not really doing anything all that special. And I guess that's the point, is I'm really not going to use anything that I don't think a, a new player would be able to, you know, would be unable to use. So with these kicks, for example, I'm going to try to kick this guy, because he's a fat tank. Actually, no, I'm going to illustrate how to beat tanks another way. Basically, just come up to something, tap the X button, You're or not tap it, but I mean hold it down. You're going to want to try to memorize the uh, the distance that you're going to need to be before you execute it fully. So let's see, I'm going to test it on this highway real quick, where to jump to the side here. So, oh, this isn't level. Right, so tapping X regularly sort of gives me this little quick movement. This is your high boost. Holding it down is going to give me this kick. And towards the end of it is where your most damage is, and you still have a couple of active frames afterwards, but they will do less damage. 
Now, before I actually smash my knee into something, I'm not going to be doing anything with the kick. You can still be traveling towards something, and when you, I guess, connect with it, you will uh, deliver the kick, but only when the animation is finished, so they can still kind of get away. Um, tanks, they have a strong stationary turning bonus, but what we have in this case is height and cover, and I'm going to see if I can do this without getting hit at all, just for display. So you can see, this thing can turn pretty considerably, but... Oh no, we took a bullet. Damn, I have to commit Spooku. Oh, come on. <laughs> he kicked me instead, damn. Alright, so we kicked him. Although, I'm gonna get auto cannon to death, and that's not good. Oh no! First death of the run. Impossible. Absolutely unforgivable. Oh no. <laughs> uh, Alright. Well, I guess it was bound to happen sooner or later. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> well, whatever. So yeah, I guess beside the point, um, tanks up close, don't fight them. <laughs> Unless you got like piles or something. Oh shit, I hit quit, so sorry again. Fuck you, game. Where were we? Right, so obviously that's not what you want to do, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you try to be cool. Right, so what the hell. Ooh, oh, loading times. Alright, so you, what you saw me do there, I guess, for a moment, at least, was glide boost backwards off a building into something. This is something that I would use occasionally in PvP, because glide boost, when you execute a glide boost, you can move in basically every direction but the opposite of the direction that you glide boosted in. So you see there, when I try to go backwards, I prevent it. So I'm going to glide boost directly backwards. I'm going to slowly roll my stick forward, and no, it's going to stop. Um, similarly, sudden movement will not permit you to do this. So if I just go um, forward and then right, or no, I left, I mean, yeah, I can kind of do that. But then say I'm going back like this, and then I tap, no, <laughs> I hit a building. So forward, and then I don't, yeah, I guess you can go either way. Oops. But if, don't let your, like, your hand off the, uh, the thumbstick. But you can just suddenly go from any direction, pretty much spontaneously. Which, I I feel like sometimes I cut my boost by doing it in the opposite direction. Maybe, I guess, it's because my stick is broken sometimes. Anyhow, so let's re-illustrate the point. So we can see this thing um, does not have the defenses to buff out the weapons that we're using right now. Uh, he has a CE shield out, he's got a Gatling gun, he's got, oh no, those are rockets. What a weirdo, dude. Oh no, yeah, that is a CE shield. My bad. So we're just going to plank away at this guy. And you can see he really can't do a whole lot to, you know, hurt us at this point. Um, that's because we're doing effective damage and he is not. Our rifle is hitting him effectively through his armor. His gats are not doing a whole lot. Those rockets, though, if they hit me, will be um, hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, you're seeing we're just shredding this thing. And all we're doing is keeping height and jumping around. Um... That's something that I think the other control schemes will really help you guys out with. Is uh, being able to press the face buttons, I guess. Or execute things like boost drive and jump. Alright, we unlocked a couple of things. We completed a mission. Wonderful. But yeah, no, just keeping your, your mobility actions going and flowing smoothly. It will take a little bit of learning, but when you get the hang of it, it will go pretty quick. I mean, you will go pretty quick, I should say. <laughs> and it'll be just second nature to you. Or I suppose that would be the hope. Now loading. That is the swallowtail head, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, head there, display the image. Oh, goody, this mission. Um, some missions will reward you for being quick about it or doing specific things. This one in particular, you are just going to have to beat more enemies than the enemy, or not enemy, than the allied mercenary AC. So yeah, I'm just going to throw out some glide boosts. We're going to run in here and just start shooting at things, and it's going to be wonderful. And if you are low on energy, something you can do is to, I guess, make yourself harder to hit, is jump, um, try to boost the side, and then cut your boosters. We'll kind of get you going a little bit quicker than you normally would, I guess. Little tank there. 
Mmm, some golems. Lovely, lovely little fodder enemies. They're just gonna be doing their thing, and we're just gonna be shooting at them. And god, this is not all that entertaining. Ooh, kill bounty B. Wonderful, wonderful. Now there's still more. Oh, all the way over there. I went in the wrong direction. No! When in doubt, look for markers. Also, scan mode. I will... I cannot say it enough, really. Just scan mode, scan mode, scan mode. Scan mode! Scan mode. We'll make a song out of it. Call it the scan mode song. Can I kick you? Oh, no, I couldn't do it in time. <laughs> oh yeah, fun thing is you can boost drive, or, yeah, what is it called, boost drive? You can boost drive off of uh, other people, which is really fucking funny. Alright. Ooh, yay, we did a thing. I guess I should maybe talk about this little screen. You can see we have our payment. Base pay, bonus pay, total pay, personal pay, blah blah blah, ammunition costs, repair costs. These are the things that might screw over new players, Is um, especially if you're going down sorties in the, I guess, the world mode. Um, you can incur really high ammunition and repair costs, and those will bankrupt you if you don't have a lot of money. Uh, this is probably not going to be a problem for us, but uh, just in general, watch out for that. Especially if you're doing merc work, because if you die, I don't think you get paid. And you also have to pay for the, re, uh, the repair cost of your AC, which is not fun. Uh, you're an enemy AC. Wonderful. Well, Alright, so look at this thing. Heavyweight bipedal type. Laser rifle, pulse machine guns. So it tells you basically what you're up against. Fires TE weapons blindly, poor energy management. So what we're going to do is uh, basically circle strafe this guy a bunch. Um, not get too close. We don't have a whole lot of TE uh, defense ourselves. If we really want to be tryhards, we'd swap over to the the heavyweight legs. We have junk heavyweight legs in the garage. Not that I would really recommend using them all that much, but they're there. I'm going to be sticking with the midweight for the most of this playthrough, unless someone wants to request other builds, which it's whatever. Uh, yeah. That's the thing. It looks pretty cool, I guess. So when you're fighting a heavyweight, typically your TE damage output is not going to do a whole lot, unless it's like a Sawa type weapon, which we don't have. We just have a PMG. So, alright, we're going to stand this dude. Uh, Neodori Model 2, Pulse Gun. He's charging a laser rifle, you can see that little glow. Um, I'm just going to spam bullets at him. And see, you can see at the edge of our effective range, we're not doing a whole lot to him. We're going to have to get in closer if we want to hope to hit anything. That's the thing about long range play, is that it's... Really not all that rewarding, I don't think. This guy has got a ton of AP, but as you probably saw earlier, his defenses are pretty shit. So, we're, yeah, we're just going to sort of hop in here in this pit. Um, wherever you can, using boost drive to get around is more inefficient than boosting yourself normally with high boost. So try to abuse that fact if you can. Let's actually scan him again. So... Personally, I usually forget what all I'm looking for when I'm scanning things. Don't shoot me, please. Alright, so he's got 3,500 TE defense, which is a lot. His CE ain't that much, and his K is atrocious. Generally, um, I think the, the joke in 5 was, first you scan to see what you need to use to kill them. Then you scan to see... Uh, so I guess the first scan is... You look at their defenses. Your second scan typically is going to be, you know, okay, what is he using against me? Like, what, what's what been hitting me so hard, I guess, was the joke. And then the, the third scan is, why are they still alive? You look at their AP. I was just keeping it simple. Really, you're just going to want to try to absorb all that information as quick as possible. But in the heat of the moment, typically you're only really going to care about what you're shooting at them. If you have a moment, maybe you're going to look at everything else, but whatever. So we just killed the thing. Uh, that was easy. And then, oh, we're fighting a group of enemies supported by an AC, which really can't be all that much more difficult than anything else, honestly. And then after this, I think we're going to do one more story mission, then I'm going to take a quick break, and then 
probably just splice all this shit together. <laughs> Alright, so immediately activating booster. You can also activate booster by jumping if you have it uh, set to that. You can deactivate the booster in the air, it's fun. Uh, throwing out recons. I'm going to need to replace those eventually because I'm bored. So if you just walk in, you're going to get taren up by these things. But if I glide boost in, it's really not much of a problem. Unless I'm not paying attention, in which case I get shot by that. Oopsie. Alright, buddy. Yeah, take bullets. Oh, I had already swapped my weapons. Oops. I'm smart. Oh, got shot again. It's definitely not something that should happen, is allowing yourself to be shot. Hello, friend. Perfect. Alright, so this AC is going to drop in. Uh, what does he got? He's got howitzers and marakumos, which is really fucking cool, actually. <laughs> I don't think I noticed that before. Mm, anyhow, so we got more enemies up here. They're really not going to do a lot to us, so let's find the enemy AC. Alright, recon. Oh! Hi there, buddy. <laughs> that was fucking great. Right. Enemy AC, where are you? Alright, so it shows enemies nearby. I'm just going to throw up a little bit more. Ah, oh, there you are, dude. So what are you? What are you weak to? Ah, uh, you got TE defense, so I guess we're going to be better rifling you. Let's go. He was super aggressive. Oh, he's going to go for Kumo swings. That's cool. Oh, of note, remember to turn your booster back on after you've disabled it, because you can't glide boost without your booster being on. Helios heat. More like speed destruction. <laughs> right then. Was that everything? It's probably a little bit more over there. Yeah, no? Let's see. Where are you now? Ah, perfect. Cutting boosters and then boost charging is a really cool way to get people off guard. Also makes it a little bit easier, I think. Because then you have you have your fall going into it, so you can boost and then cut your boosters and then boost again. Oh, but of course it disabled my boost charge because the mission's over. And they don't want to have to do anything additional calculating after that, I assume. Basically just preventing you from killing your teammates, which is the funnest part of this game. You didn't hear that come from my mouth, I swear. Eh, Frank. Yay. Alright, story three! Strike the enemy transport convoy. This is actually kind of a tough one. So, let's see what we can do beforehand. Right then. Hello, shoppy shop. What do we have? So, now we got some money. Um, something you should probably do, especially if you want to go try to play PvP. Which I will still discourage you from until we have an adequate AC for it. But what you're, wanting to, what you're going to want to do is replace all these fucking junk parts, because they're pretty much atrocious. Like, you'll see here... Oh no, this is the shop, my bad. But, um, so let's see. We don't have a whole lot that we can buy, unfortunately. Oh, look, at Padenka. Wonderful. We're going to buy one of you, because you're pretty decent. Uh, if you are anal, like me, you will probably buy things in sets. However, um, I don't think I really care. So I'm not going to buy one for the left arm and the right arm and whatever. It's not really that big of a deal. And the Adori is also another weapon. So these two things, um, Padenka, I mean, this is called a BO7 in this game, but it's whatever. And a Neodora Model 1. These two weapons in a combo together work really well because uh, you have high CE damage output, which is upfront DPS. And you have these things to hit everything that's going to buff your CE out, which is typically... Um, either a tank, which this is not going to be useful against, but the tank probably isn't going to buff out the battle rifle anyhow. And, uh, namely quads and HRJs are what you're going to hit with these things, because they have a, a leg spread, or a defense spread on their legs that is high in CE and typically not high in much else. And you'll be able to overwhelm that with, uh, two power base weapons like that. Um, let's bring some other shit with... Let's see, PMG, well, we could upgrade our PMG, so let's do that. Uh, you can easily get lost in the store, is something I'm noticing right now, as I'm kind of forgetting what I'm getting. 
Although I don't think it really matters all that much. What else can I grab? I will be using blades a little bit, I think, because they are fun. And I think, uh, just in general, uh, knowing how to use laser blade weapons uh, may serve you well, or just melee in general. I'll probably try to showcase it a little bit throughout this little journey that we're going on. Because uh, they're incredibly destructive, and I think if you learn how to use them a little bit, you will probably be better served uh, in understanding how to avoid them. Gatling guns, I'm going to say stay away from these. Um, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, fucking love these weapons. Because basically it's just mindless trigger hold. And it's plink damage and it's good in every situation. Um, they're outclassed by a lot, honestly. Although if you want to be annoying and you want to plink out to... What is the range of these things? Something really atrocious. Oh no, on this it's not really all that high. But on the other, there's... A second gen version of that that just has really long range. Uh, shields, if you have trouble with specific enemies, come in here and buy a shield that has the specific defense. You could wall it pretty well. Target gun, useless. Um, jammers, useless for us. Sentry guns, I don't know why you'd want to be a hipster and use these. Cannon type weapons, um, yeah, they're there. We're not a tank though, so I'm not going to go talking about these just yet. And, uh, let's see, Kate Missile. Oh, look, we have high speeds now. High speed missile, this missile specifically is a really good one. We're going to use this and probably keep it with us for about the whole game. And I just backed out of, oops, <laughs> my bad. Let's see what else we can use. Heat rockets, um, heat rockets are disgustingly powerful. They're good for story, I think. This literally says easy to install lightweight warhead. Um... Let's see, you have less reload, more ammo. Or I'm going to go ahead and buy one of these, just because they're going to be handy. Uh, there's KE rockets as well, which have a different flight path. They're a little bit harder to use, I'd say. Let's see, plasma missiles. Plasma missiles are stupidly effective in story mode. Um, they ain't so hot on ammo, though, but whatever. No, these things are just really good in general. Might as well pick some up. Bomb dispensers. Yeah, there ain't much else in here. Sea Wiss is a pretty good thing to pick up. Um, I'm not going to get that one, though. Uh, energy amps. I would recommend against these things. UAV. Don't use it. Subcomputer. Uh, probably better for PvP. Reserve mags. E if you really need the ammo for story mode, come pick these things up. It'll increase your ammo by 40%. If you have dual shoulder, it'll increase it by 80%. And there's one later that increases it by 80% anyhow. And if you use two, it's like 160, which is a lot of ammo. Now let's see. Oh, uh, heads. Uh, this part's pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and buy it. Uh, you will see it has nice camera performance and good stability computation. These two stats are something to look out for. Because stability computation is what's going to affect your overall speed, turning, and whatnot. And camera is going to let you lock on from further away. So we're going to be able to snipe a little bit with this. Or really acquire lock sooner. You're normally not going to be firing from the edge of your effective range. But you will be acquiring a target earlier. So by the time you reach them, you will have your lock on. Um, as a midweight, though, we are probably going to be running with... Uh, a pretty standard combination of parts, which is going to be a CE head, a TE core, and KE arms, because that's just a good way to do it. Uh, we could go with Denali here because we've unlocked them. Um, early on, if you really are desperate to, to beef up, go with a frequency. That's probably what I'm going to use because they have a high load cap and I just want to demonstrate a couple of things. Do we unlock anything else here? Probably not. Nope. Yeah, let's see, that's too bad. Yep, yeah, alright, so that's about it for now. We ain't gonna need a whole lot much else. So we're gonna go ahead and equip these, and I will just probably give you a before and after of the stats, although it's not really gonna matter all that much. You can probably pay attention, example to like the AP or whatever. And you'll see new, because we've unlocked a couple of different parts that have probably been thrown our way by the, the story, just basically handing us the carcasses of dead ACs, which is nice of them. Um, I'm going to use heat rockets for the time being, because they are cool. And there we go, blades. 
Right then, so you see our IP is increased. Um, we've lost a little bit of KE defense, but our other defenses, our CE and TE, have sort of evened out. Um, for story mode, I want to say aiming for around a thousand in each is a pretty good idea, although for KE, you always, always, always want to have, I want to say like 1500 or more, because KE weapons have pretty good DPS, and they will shred you if you don't have that much KE. That's a big mistake of new players, is they prioritize this stat down here. AP, because this is your health, and increasing it will be nice, because you'll have more health points, but your defenses up here, I can't select those, but your KE, CE, and TE, those defenses are what's going to determine the, uh, the damage sort of numbers that come into your AP. Now, having a, having damage be ineffective means that it's below the, the, the defense numbers that you have there. And if it's below a thousand, that's basically most of the stuff in the story that's going to be used. Other ACs will use other AC weapons on you, so if you're wondering, you know, what the hell is killing you, I'd say try to buff out the weapons that are, that you're using, for example. Um, buff out is basically the, the terminology that veteran players use, and I guess it's the terminology that everyone uses. Um, which is to say you buff up your defenses, the points, the, the break point specifically for the weapon that you are worried about. Uh, in story mode, it doesn't matter a whole lot. I will launch into greater detail about this later. Anyhow, yeah, nice. We look like a steely chrome over here. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I guess one, one last thing about maxing AP like an idiot. Um, you, your defenses, if a hit is ineffective, it reduces it to a about 30% of its total damage. And even then, it will reduce it by a, a ton. Um, a little bit more than that, usually. Uh, if it's effective, you do more like 80% of the total weapon, or the, the weapon's listed damage. Which, for weapons that have a high fire rate, means that you are going to get shredded. Now, this is, uh, this is a fun mission, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll probably see why. Or actually, I guess I can just tell you now, because this is really not meant to be a Let's Play. Um, you will be greeted, we'll say, by uh, a couple of enemy eunuchs. And by a couple, I mean, I think there's like five or so. And that's a lot of things to take on at this point in the story. And for a moment, you're going to have to survive, and they're going to be throwing a lot of shit at you, and it's going to do a lot of damage. And it's not going to be a whole lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. Oh, rockets, by the way, don't lock on. They're kind of difficult to see as well. But whatever. If we kill everything yet, wonderful. Yeah, so they'll say, oh no, we have company, and you'll be all like, oh no, what is that? And they're going to shoot down this guy, like a sod. And, uh, they're gonna bring in these, these spooky little things called Unax, um, which are basically unmanned ACs. And so, right now, we're gonna end up fighting five. So it's gonna be a five on one, I think. Uh, you can see them over there. We're gonna throw some recons out, figure out what the hell's going on. And, uh, yeah, these things, they have battle rifles. Um, they're gonna do considerable damage to us because we do not have CE defense that high. Their KE and TE is quite low, though, so we can damage them. They do have 47k AP. So this is maybe what you might say is the typical, um, I guess, newbie build, is they'll come at you with sort of a mishmash of weapons, usually all the same attack type, and uh, they will have stacked frames, which is to say that they have shit defenses in some things, and one of their defenses is probably outrageous, so their defense spreads are just weird. They probably got a ton of AP. Now this kind lady over here is going to loan us her sniper cannon. And uh, if I lure them over to that marker over there, um, they will all die. And these things are just going to kind of run at me wildly. And I could try to fight them. I'm going to lose horribly. But you can see that I do do effective damage to them, which will add up to quite a lot. Uh, but we're going to run over there with glide boost and hopefully not get shot a ton by those BRs. We do actually outrange them on our FCS, so we can turn around and sort of fight them. 
And you can see just with the rifle, we will do pretty decent damage. But yeah, we're just going to sort of back up and shoot at these guys a little bit and soften them up. And they're going to get over here. So again, FCS determines a lot because we have a long range FCS, which means we can kite these guys for fucking days. And also you see that sort of translucent ring outside of the blue ring. Uh, that is our actual lock ring. It's not the actual thing that's that's there that's sort of darkened a little bit and blue in color. It's that translucent thing that uh, I guess is kind of opaque, really. That is what's going to determine um, if it's in there, we will start acquiring lock. And if you have auto-aim enabled, that means that you will be able to um, you'll track your target a little bit. Now, you'll see, they're really not able to do a whole lot of damage to us. If we were to fight them in close combat, we'd get fucked, which I'm going to try to illustrate now. Actually, before they all get sniped down, I want to get a little blade hit on this guy. Yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, blades are really fucking satisfying. Yeah! <laughs> I love it, dude. Ah, uh, cut them up. Total destruction. Delicious. So you'll see, they did do a ton of damage to us there, and that's because we let them. <laughs> if you get in close among weapons that are effective, that's illustrating the point. You will get torn the fuck up. Although we did win through a mix of cunning, best friends, and laser blades, which is a wonderful combo. And so that's, that's the end of that lesson, I guess. And I will probably break it here, and, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs>